Welcome, this is HR The Works President Don Finn, and today I'm going to talk to you about the 1099 time bomb. You know, a lot of companies, a lot of entrepreneurs I know, really like using independent contractors. As, as this slide here says, there's a lot of upside to using them. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility. You can put them on separate projects. They can work with three other independent contractors to, to get you a solution. You, know, they, they, you can really focus on their specialization. So, for example, I might use an outsourced bookkeeper because I don't need full-time bookkeeping. You know, they, they can be located in any place. I have independent contractors that work for me 500 miles away, 3,000 miles away, and 6,000 miles away. You know, they, they, they lower taxes, so you don't have to pay Social Security tax for them. You don't have to pay unemployment taxes and other FICAN things like that for them. And lastly, there's reduced insurance costs. So, for example, you don't have to cover them for workers' compensation insurance and other general liability type of insurances. So that's why people like using the independent contract. A lot of upside to it, and I use them as well. But what I'm here to talk about more importantly today is the downside of misclassifying somebody as an independent contractor when they are in fact an employee. And if you, as the next slide shows you here, there's a lot of risk associated with that. First of all, you can't control an independent contract. That's one of the major indicia of whether somebody's an employee versus an independent contractor. So you, basically you can tell them what you want done, but not how they have to get it done. Secondly, there's, if, if they are misclassified, the wage and hour penalties can be enormous. If these people put in a lot of hours and generally you don't track their time, if they claim they've worked overtime and they're misclassified, you'll end up paying them an hourly rate much greater than you ever expected to and have to pay overtime penalties for up to three to four years depending on where you work. So that's an enormous exposure, and, and if you've got a group of people considered independent contractors, you may be exposed there. You may be exposed also for benefits violations under a risk and these other things, because you didn't include people in your health insurance plan or your 401k plan, and yet you control them, okay? So you've got exposures there, and, and there's also exposure to taxing authorities. So what happens is 1099 doesn't pay their taxes, they, they get audited, some of their complaints, and they start saying, well, I was really an employee, and all of a sudden they start looking at the situation, and as you'll see here, the IRS and the state agencies believe as many as eight out of 10 people are misclassified as independent contractors. So they see a lot, a lot of money behind all of this. And, and lastly, there, there's the exposure to a loss of intellectual property. So if an independent contractor creates something for you, they own it unless you've done the right job of creating a work for hire agreement. So that's the downside of it. So why is this going on? Why is there so much pressure right now? Well, because we're in a recession, these governments are broke and they need the money. So these next couple of slides can show you how not these special interest groups, the same special interest groups that are behind the unionization, and the, 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 that, that whole act, behind a lot of the other stuff that's going on are behind this. And, and then you've got, as shows in the next slide, they're looking at criminal prosecutions, and in the next slide they're looking at millions of dollars they expect to collect from all of this, and in the next slide states are putting together a task force, for example, Michigan's put together a task force, so has New York, so has California, so has every other major state. And then you look at the next slide, and the California Attorney General are going after people, sometimes hundreds at a time, who they consider to be misclassified because they need the money, okay? And, and you see the last slide here ought to be the most scary one. The IRS is looking to audit 6,000 companies just so they can get the statistics to justify they're going after many thousands of companies, even more than 6,000 companies. And guess who's going to get caught in that trap? If you've got somebody misclassified, you will. So what are you supposed to do about this? First of all, somebody walks and talks like an employee, they're an employee, so you've got to treat them that way, even though you'd rather do it otherwise. Uh, you've got to know the law, and, and in our program, the 1099 Time Bomb Program, we let you know how each one of your states is looking at this, not, and as well as the IRS in general. You've got to follow the checklist type approach, so when you're analyzing whether somebody's an independent contractor, you've got to literally check the boxes to make sure you don't miss anything in that analysis. Of course, we supply you one of those checklists. Uh, you, you can always go to the IRS and get what's called an SS-88 ruling from them, and they'll, they'll tell you up front whether they consider that person to be an independent contractor or an employee. 
You, know, you can also get proof of IC status. They've got their own business card, their own business licenses, they've worked with other companies, they look and, they look and walk and talk like an independent contractor. You can also make sure that they show you proof of their tax payments. You know, so you can contract for that, no reason why not. And also that they have insurance to cover that work they're doing or if they're injured or working for you or something like that. And lastly, what you want to do is make sure you get the independent contractor relationship in writing because as we lawyers know, it's not a commitment until it's in writing. So what I just share with you is what you really need to know in general to avoid this 1099 time bomb. And if we'd like the tools to actually apply this learning, then I want you to know a little bit more about the 1099 time bomb program so stay on for a few minutes and we'll let you know about that. Thank you very much.